Hi, Amy Walker here. I am the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Dino Wad. And today's video, we're gonna talk about how to stretch your marketing budget and how to get those dollars to go farther. So I've got three tips for you today to help stretch your marketing budget and help get those dollars to go farther. And the first is actually a culture tip. You have a team on your payroll of very highly talented, very connected folks who should be advocates for you. They should be wanting you to win in marketing. They should be wanting to go out there and spread the word and help bring people in. And that's the first place to start if you want to save more money on your marketing. It's actually to get more out of the people that you already have on payroll. Now, I'm not suggesting that they're marketers. In fact, most of them are trained in another area and they're skilled in another area. However, having your current team involved in supporting the marketing efforts is one of the best ways to get more bang for your buck. Let's just use social media as an example. If you post a post on social media and you have five people in your office engage with it, you are immediately going to be outperforming the majority of your posts that you do that don't have anyone in the office like them. And here's why. You post and then you have your immediate sphere of influence that supports that and then their sphere of influence is given visibility because it shows that they engaged with your post. So getting your team to be invested in helping you win on social media is going to help you get more engagement for less money and faster than you would if you didn't have them. Another example, your referral programs. You can have the best referral program out there and if you don't have the assistance asking them on a regular basis, so do you have any friends that are needing braces? And reminding the moms and reminding the kids about this referral program, guess what happens? they forget. Um, I know that there's a couple times when you're most excited, as a parent who has had kids with braces, there's a couple times when you're most excited and most ready to give referrals. It is right when you first sign up for braces and you've just had that consultation where you see the potential of what your children's teeth can be. It's also that first time when you realize that those wonky teeth that were like way up here are no longer down there and like they're down where they're supposed to be and you're going, wow, this is really working. And then when they get the braces off and they have this beautiful smile and they look you know, beautiful or handsome, those are the times as a parent that you're very excited about your children's braces. That, those are the times when you naturally want to go and post, but guess what? I've never as a parent had anyone remind me or ask me during those key times because your team is so focused on their tasks and they're, they're not as focused, you haven't created yet that culture of we're all in this to create results. We are all either on the sales team or we're on the sales support team. We are all here to create wins and results and your team's gotta buy in on that level so that they can really help support all of your efforts. So that's my number one tip. Utilize the people you're already paying. Get a cultural shift so that they will buy in on a higher level and they will focus with you on creating those results. Tip number two is that we are going to balance out the free and the paid marketing opportunities. I like my clients to have seven different things that they do to bring leads into the business throughout the year. So that could be your community outreach events that you do, that could be going and speaking in schools, that could be your social media, it could be that you're running ads, it could be that you're doing a kiosk in the mall, it could be that you're doing your referral programs, it could be your referring doctors. There's Honestly, I know a lot of you do kind of similar things. The sky is the limit though when it comes to marketing and there's so many cool things you could be doing. What we want to make sure that we're doing though is we're selecting our marketing opportunities into three categories. One are your investment opportunities. So this is where you're going to spend the bucks. This is where it's going to take some money to get the ball rolling. The second are your low costs, where it is going to be an investment, but it's not going to be like, for example, renting out an entire movie theater for all your patients and their friends. It's going to be more things that are a smaller amount, but that we can get good return from them. And then we need to mix in the free. So the free are going to be your... Um, events that you do that really don't cost you much of anything, your social media, um, it could be 
things that just cost you in time, right? Like um, having meetings and being out in the community, going and speaking to a school, that's not going to really cost you anything but your time. So we want to create a balance between the investment pieces, the low cost pieces and the free pieces so that we can stretch that budget farther. What I think most people do is they're not really sure what they should be doing. They don't know what are the right opportunities or where they're likely to be able to win. And so instead what they do is they just say, this is how much money we have and they go and spend it in one or two places. And, and so then instead of having seven different things that they do to generate leads, they have a couple and they have all their eggs in those two baskets, those one or two baskets. And if it works, it's great. And if it doesn't work, it's very frustrating. So if we can create a better comprehensive strategy and spread our dollars throughout, you're gonna be a lot happier with the return that you get. And I'll give you a little hint. Sometimes your best producers are actually in that low cost phase. They, uh, if you get creative with your team and you guys think outside the box, you can come up with some really amazing opportunities that are not that expensive. You just gotta think about it and you gotta get your team to work for you and, um, and create some good uh, new thinking, new outside the box thinking. My third tip for you, and I hope this one doesn't sting too much, but it's to avoid the ignorance tax. Um, when you don't know enough about something, you tend to just throw money at it and hope for the best. And I have seen this burn a lot of people. So for example, um, I've seen doctors show me their website and tell me they paid $15,000 for this website. And I look at that website and I look at a lot of websites. I know a lot of web developers. I've helped many clients get their sites up and running. And I look at it and say, hmm, that's a $5,000 website that you paid $15,000 for. That's an example of an ignorance tax. If you don't know what are the going rates and you don't understand a lot about the website creation process, I've seen people overpay and also not even own their site. Their site is owned by the company who built it and so if they ever wanna go a different direction, they have to start again from scratch. That's a expense that I call the ignorance tax. Here's another example. I have seen companies put all of their marketing dollars into one or two things, and all that they do for them is create visibility for the company. They're not lead capturing, they're not lead nurturing, they're not creating conversion, so all it is is visibility, and they've put all of their marketing budget into one of their five areas, and now they're frustrated because their marketing is not working. So I don't think that it is your job to be the marketing director. I actually think it's somebody else's job and we need to find that person within your team. But I do think that there's a big difference between delegation and abdication. And here's what it, the difference is. Delegation is when you give something out for your team to do and they report back in with you and you have intelligent conversations, you understand what's going on, you understand what they're telling you and what should be happening and you can tell when they're not doing a great job. If when you talk to your marketing company, maybe you've outsourced to a marketing firm, if every time you talk to them you think, I have no idea if they're doing a good job or not, because I don't really understand what they're telling me, then that would be what I call abdication, where you don't understand it, so you just say, here you go, take it, take my money, run with it, and then you hope for the best. What I prefer is delegation. Delegation is where you know enough about the subject in order to know if they're doing a good job or not, and not 12 months down the road when you're looking at it going, we spent all this money all year and we haven't really seen any growth in our numbers. I want you to be able to, in your regular, ongoing, monthly, bi-monthly meetings or weekly with your in-house team, I want you to be able to ask the right questions and know if you're on track for your marketing goals. So that's what I call the ignorance tax. So those are my, my three areas that will help your marketing budget spread farther. Number one, get your team involved. They're already on the payroll and there is so much that they can do, so create that culture. Number two, create a well-rounded marketing plan, but don't, spend, don't try to spend money on every single one and don't spend all your money in one or two places. And then number three, learn enough about marketing to know if you're spending your dollars in the right places to understand what the dollars that you spend are doing for you and make sure that you can have intelligent conversations where you really know if it's working or if it's not working. That's what I call the ignorance tax. When you're paying too much just because 
you didn't know any better. So if we can get rid of those three things, you're gonna be able to stretch your marketing budget farther. And as I mentioned in my last video, I am here to support you. That's what my role is in the company as Vice President of Sales and Marketing, to really help the clients work with you to make sure that you've got the right plan in place, you're using the right strategies, that your culture is where it needs to be, and I would love to assist you in any way that I can. So there's a link to my schedule in the email if you'd like to chat. Go ahead and pick a time that works for you and we'll dig in and figure out what's going on in your business and how we can get you on track. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.